Good afternoon, Lavaca County, and thank you for tuning in on Have You Heard. I'm Brent Chilishek. And I'm Grace Hideki. Today for our local news, the Hallettsville High School senior class is accepting donations to help the victims affected by Hurricane Ian. The donations begin Monday, and all money will be due to the school by Friday, November 4th. Also, 245 Texas counties continue to experience a record-breaking drought, as still no rain is in the forecast. Local Hallettsville resident explains he has never seen it so bad, and it's simply just heartbreaking. Many meteorologists are expecting the drought to continue their winter as dry air lingers over South Texas. Flu cases catch an early start this year as Lavaca County hospitals report an increased number of positive cases and flu-like symptoms. Influenza types A and B have both been reported, and you can visit your local pharmacies to receive your flu vaccine. Bisbee athletes Olivia Etzler and Josh Griffin are Hallettsville Athletes of the Week. They succeeded in their talents finishing in the top 10 at every cross-country meet this year. They will be at Regionals on the 25th in Corpus Christi. We want to wish them the best of luck. That's all for your local news in Lavaca County. We'd like to send it over to Kenneth Smith for the sports. Welcome to the sports and have you heard? We recover your favorite Lavaca County teams. I'm Kenneth Smith and we're going to start off with a recap of football from September 30th and October 7th. The St. Paul Cardinals beat Brentwood Christian in a shutout 44 to nothing on September 30th. This past Friday, the Cardinals also took on Holy Cross from San Antonio and lost 41-7. The Cardinals had 151 rushing yards in the night. The Cardinals are now 3-4 after this loss. This Friday, the Cardinals take on their rival, Hallettsville Sacred Heart, in Hallettsville at 7.30. The number four Shiner Comanches won against Bloomington 62-14 on September 30th. This past Friday, the Comanches also blew out Three Rivers 67-7. Dalton Brooks had 284 rushing yards and four touchdowns on the night. This is Shiner's sixth, sixth win in a row, improving to 6-1. and one. Shiner st is starting off District 3-0. This coming Friday, Shiner will also play Skidmore Tynan in Shiner at 7-30. The Sacred Heart Indians lost to Bay Area Christian 35-3. This loss ended the Indians' three-game winning streak. This past Friday, the Indians took on a legacy prep and lost in a shootout 41-38. The Indians are now 3-4 and four in their season. This week, the Sacred Heart Indians take on their rival, Shiner St. Paul, in Hallsville at 7.30. The Hallsville Brahmas won against Kip, 47 to nothing. The Brahmas' bounce back win ended in two quarters. This past Friday, the Brahmas took on number two Columbus Cardinals and lost in a tough game, 35 to 13. The Kedras bet for at six receptions for 62 yards in the night. Hallsville looks to bounce back once again this Friday versus Hempstead in Hempstead at 7.30. Now moving over to volleyball. The St. Paul Lady Cardinals lost against Bolverde Bracken in three sets. Ashlyn Peshek had six kills and two blocks. Last Monday, the Lady Cardinals lost against Concordia. The Lady Cardinals did beat Kerrville OLH in three sets on Friday. The Shiner Lady Comanches won against Flatonia in three sets. Riley Vakura had 14 kills in that win. They also won Saturday against Schulenburg to take the first spot in their district. Just yesterday, the Comanches beat Louise to be 5-1 in their district. The Sacred Heart Indianettes won against Our Lady of the Hills from Kerrville in three sets Friday. Jewel Janak had six kills and Bailey Haas had seven digs. Anika Brooks had 17 kills in their loss to Bolverde Bracken. Next Tuesday, the Indianettes will take on Shiner St. Paul and Hallsville at 5 o'clock. The Hallsville Lady Ramos lost last Friday to Edna in four sets. Bailey Wagner had three kills in the third set and Kinley Hall had four kills in the fourth set. The Lady Brahmas also lost this Tuesday to Yoakum. The Lady Brahmas are looking to bounce back and get a spot in the playoffs against Palacios this Friday in Palacios at 5 o'clock. Good morning, Lavaca County. My name is Cody Bible, Hallettsville FFA Vice President. And my name is Lauren Lundy, Hallettsville FFA Treasurer. And we're excited to have you joining us for this week's installment of Ag in Your World, brought to you by Hallettsville FFA. This week, our FFA members have been busy getting ready for their district LDE competitions coming up in November. The FFA Booster Club is also gearing up for their annual fundraiser mural on October 24th at the KC Hall. FFA members are reminded that Lo the Lavaca County Progress Show is scheduled for October 22nd. The show will begin with check-in at 7.30 and the shows will start at 8 a.m. with goats followed by lambs and then cattle. Our next segment is brought to you by the Hallsville FFA Commercial Steer Exhibitors. It's the Market Day Report. Feeder cattle trading held steady over the last week with a cash market at about $1.75 per pound. Live cattle held steady at $1.44 per pound this week. And the corn market was down again this week 
to about $7.10 per bushel. Every week, we like to shine light on our FFA members. This week's FFA Spotlight is FFA Officer Cody Bible. Cody is currently serving as the Hallettsville FFA Vice President. She participates in the Ag Issues LDE team and was a member of the Green Hand Skills team, as well as the Range and Farm Business Management judging CDE teams. Cody is always ready to join in and lend a helping hand. And we'll close with Ag News of the Week. The American Farm Bureau recently released data suggesting that the price of holiday turkeys will be up significantly this year. Some prices per pound have increased 112% over the previous year. Causes of this dramatic increase can be attributed to the impacts of avian influenza around the country and inflation. That brings us to the end of our time here today with you. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to having you back next week for Ag in Your World brought to you by the Hallettsville FFA. Good afternoon, Lavaca County. I am Dixie Blanton with the weather. This weekend there will be a mix of sun and clouds and with the highs in the 90s and lows in the 60s. Monday, however, we get our first real cold front of the season and next week we can expect lows in the 40s and highs in the 70s before warm up again for the weekend. The area will also see a good chance of rain on Monday as the front blows in. Have a great week in Lavaca County, and now let's send it back to Grayson Brandt for our special guest this week. Welcome back to Have You Heard. Our special guest this week is Ms. Deanne Noasawa from Norma's House. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we're really glad you can join us, and I want to start off the interview with the question, how did you get into Norma's House, and you know, what... What event kind of puts you into that, that situation? Sure. So Norma's House is the Children's Advocacy Center for Gonzales and Lavaca County. And so what that means is we work with children who are victims or alleged victims of a crime. It could be child abuse, it could be sexual assault, domestic violence, any crime against a child. We would provide services to these children. So I first heard about Norma's House um, when I used to work for Children's Protective Services. And we would work some cases together and um, just realized that Norma's House was more of what I wanted to do. Um, wanted to be, to be able to make a difference in a child's life. So that's kind of how I got involved in Norma's House. So getting involved, do you obviously know the mission of Norma's House, so what is that for you? For sure. Um, so the mission of Norma's House is to bring back the dignity, the hope, and the care for a child that has been a victim. So what we hope to do is be able to provide enough services to a child that has been a victim so that they can trust people again and heal from whatever traumatic event has occurred to them. So you obviously do have a fundraiser coming up um, to support you know, y'all and the kids. Uh, can you explain a little bit about that fundraiser? Sure. Um, I have this flyer. <laughs> um, it's Bingo Bags and Badges fundraiser. It's going to be on October 21st here at the KC Hall in Hallettsville. Um, the doors open at 5 and the event starts at 6. And what this fundraiser is, is um, we play bingo games for prizes of designer handbags. Um, and some other, like, blingy kind of things, mm -hmm. but handbags are, is the main thing. And the badges part of the fundraiser is that um, our local law enforcement first responders model the purses and the blingy oh. stuff for us. <laughs> so we get them involved. We work with them very well, you know, during the week when we have cases, but we like to show the community that we can also have fun together, too. Of course, yeah. Yes. So to be able to go to this event, how much is it to enter and all that? Okay, so the tickets for an individual are $40, um, and that will get you into the event, a bingo card, um, snacks, and some drinks. Um, but we also have sponsor tables for $450, and that is enough for eight people. Um, so eight people can come and, and sit at a table, have um, a bingo card, food, drinks, um, and two bottles of wine at their table. So when I do fundraisers, where does the money go, and you know, what, what does it go to, and, and how does it help the organization? Great question. So, um, Norma's House is funded by two really good grants that fund about 80% of our operating cost. So we have to come up with the other 20%. And so that's why we have regular fundraisers, the one in Lavaca County, and we also do one in Gonzales County once a year. And, um, and then donations and people in the community. So the money that we have through grants, fundraisers, donations, it helps us um, work really close with these children, provide whatever medical care they might have if they have injuries or, or things that happen because of the crime. We help provide care for that. We give them therapy. Um, we do family advocacy services, um, and we never charge the child or the family for the services we provide. So the funding that we raise or is donated to us is to help these children. 
So we've heard that y'all will be moving locations in Hallettsville. When will that be opening up and why did y'all decide to move? Yeah. So one of the goals of Norma's House is to have a home-like environment that feels comfy, mm -hmm. that feels safe to children. And currently, it's been great. We've been in this place in Norma's House um, that's more like an office and not like a home. So we have a great landlord, Julie Martischuk, who about a year and a half ago, I told her, we really would like a house. And she got her binoculars on, started looking for a house, found one, asked us if we liked it, bought it, is remodeling it for us, and then um, she's going to allow us to move in. And the last time we talked, she said it would be ready at like the end of October, the first part of November. So we already have our sign up. I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but we're really looking forward to moving. Right. So is Norma's house, are y'all growing? Are y'all looking for employees, or have y'all grown in the past year? Oh, great. Yeah, we have grown quite a bit. Um, so I've been with Norma's house 10 years. When I first started with Norma's house, Norma's house has been in existence since 1999. I've been with them since 2012, but I always knew about them. Like I said, I worked for CPS, I knew about them. When I first started with Norma's house in 2012, we um, provided services to about 100 kids and then their supportive family members or their siblings. Now we are up to 420 kids um, and their supportive family members and siblings. So we have grown quite a bit in the 10 years that I have been there. Um, when I first started, we had three staff members, myself, my boss, and my secretary. And now we have seven full-time staff, four part-time staff. Um, and, you know, while it's not a good thing that there's this need for us to grow, it's a good thing that we are there to answer right. the need. Sure. And so we, um, I, I feel like it's a great thing that we have been able to grow to, um, grown to address the needs in our communities. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, since y'all are growing, y'all still need a lot of donations and everything. Other than what y'all have coming up, how can someone help provide for this? Great. So if someone would like to donate toward our fundraiser, um, we can still use some purses or some handbags, things for our bingo games. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a silent auction that someone could donate an item towards our silent auction. Um, they could also make monetary donations. Um, um, if they don't want to spend any funds, we take volunteers all the time. We are always looking for volunteers. Um, they could help the day of the fundraiser, or they could come to our office and help periodically or regularly, whatever might fit best into their schedule. If, if you were to volunteer, what would your day look like? You know? So it just kind of depends on, on um, what you would like to do. So mm -hmm. we look for volunteers just to help with kind of office staff things, filing, typing, shredding, answering the phone, greeting the public, right. things like that. Um, we have, um, in the past, not currently, we've had people that wanted to do yard work, so mm -hmm. they volunteer time to do yard work. Um, we've had people paint for us. I mean, it kind of depends on what your specialty is, mm -hmm. and if you know, if you tell us what that is and you would like to volunteer, we would definitely take you up on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also do um, what we call, we do a program for interns or internships. So if college students who um, need hours for their internship, they will come and, and do some work with us. Um, the things that they need to do are very more specific than just like a general volunteer, mm -hmm. but they can also work with children and families and, and um, you know, meet the goals of their internship. Absolutely. So if someone had a lot of free time and they wanted to work with y'all, how would they be able to do that if able to. Okay, so first they can call us and um, let me give you my main number. It's 830-672-1278 and just let us know that you're interested in volunteering or, or dedicating some time to us. Um, there is um, a couple of background checks that a person or a volunteer would have to pass and um, it's just to make sure that you haven't had any incidences where um, there was a child involved. But mm -hmm. you know what, no concerns there. Once that's passed we can set you up to volunteer and and you know, help us out. That would be great. Help the children out. Right. Yeah. And my final question is, what is the feeling like being able to help children? So, you know, this is a difficult job. I tell all, all my staff, this job is not easy just because of the things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. But when you are able to help someone either get out of a situation to where they're no longer in danger or help them heal, heal from a situation where they need healing, it is the best feeling. I, um, I've done child welfare for a long time. You know, I did it with CPS before I came to Norma's house. And, you know, it's, it's a thankless job most of the time. But, I, for example, I ran into a child who is now a very much a grown-up and has kids of her own. I ran into her to the grocery store not that long ago, and she 
was very emotional and told me how much she appreciated my help. Right. You know, and maybe as a child she didn't see that, but yeah. as a grown-up she can look back and see that. And so, of course, that just made my day, you know, <laughs> yes, and right. it makes it all worth it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'd like to thank you so much for coming out and answering some great questions about Norma's House. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me share my info yes, about ma'am. Norma's House and our fundraiser. We would love to have y'all, anybody that's interested. Yes, y'all make sure to check it out. Thank you, Lilaka County, for tuning in to Have You Heard. I'm Brent Chilishek. And I'm Grace Sinecki. Make sure to tune in next time for your local news and sports.